if a system of linear equations is consistent, that is to say, if it has solutions, it has either one solution or infinitely many solutions. Which of those cases it falls into depends on whether or not it has free variables. Let's start this video by trying to nail down a little intuition. The words free and independent have similar meanings, and that's reflected by the fact that free variables act like independent variables, while basic variables act like dependent variables. Let's look at an example not from linear algebra, but from high school algebra, where you have an independent and a dependent variable. The independent variable could be anything. Like if you want x to be zero, that's fine. Once you've decided what the independent variable should be, the dependent variable is determined. Well, the idea that the independent variable could be anything means that this equation has an infinite number of solutions. Here's a solution. Here's another solution. You can let x be any real number, and you'll get a solution from that. And now, back to linear algebra. If a system of linear equations has any solutions, it has either one solution or infinitely many based on the following. If all of the variables are basic variables, there is one solution. If there are any free variables, there are infinitely many solutions. Let's look at this theorem in terms of an example we've looked at previously. We looked at this system of linear equations when we defined free and basic variables. Let's now attempt to solve it. To solve a system of linear equations, you should write down the augmented matrix. And you should put that augmented matrix into reduced row echelon form. And now we can apply this theorem. We start by observing that there are solutions. Our pivot positions are here and here, so the last column is not a pivot column. And this is the pivot position and this is the other pivot position. So x corresponds to a pivot column, it's basic. 
y corresponds to a pivot column, x basic, z is free. And this theorem says that we have infinitely many solutions. Let's look at what, what each of these rows is telling us. Remember that each row here corresponds to an equation. First row, x, plus two-thirds z equals five-thirds. Second row, y plus one-third z equals negative two-thirds. Third row, zero equals zero. So the third row isn't doing any harm, but it's not giving us any information either. Now we could take these equations and we could rewrite to them so that to the free variable z is on the right hand side of the equality. And what we have here is very similar to what we had here. Here, x could be anything. And once you determined x, you knew what y is. Here, z can be anything. So if we want z, to be a zero, we could do that. And once we've decided that z should be zero, that second equation tells us what y has to be. And that first equation tells us what x has to be. Or, Z could be one. And once you've decided that Z should be one, the second equation tells us what Y needs to be. And this first equation tells us what X needs to be. So you can let z be any real number and get a solution. And of course, because there are infinitely many real numbers, that means we have infinitely many solutions.